Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my Kassiara Boshan. Holy Spirit, you are welcomed. Lord Jesus, you are welcomed. Jehovah El Shaddai, you are welcome. And because you are here, your numerous angels are here also. In the midst of your people, please continue to manifest your power. Speak to us through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Say a better amen. amen. Shake hand with that friend beside you and welcome him or her to church. Welcome him or her to church. Once again, let's put our hands together as we celebrate the choir and the band. Thank you so very much for all that you do, the body of Christ. I'll be taking my Bible reading for the sermon of this morning from Job 19. I'll be reading from verse 25 through to 27. Job 19 from verse 25 through to 27. For I know that my Redeemer liveth. And that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Whom I shall see for myself. And my eyes shall behold and not another. Though my rings be consumed within me. The title of this morning's message is create your belief system create your belief system mr job in the midst of the devastating situation he was faced with he displayed to everyone his belief system he refused to allow the ugly and hopeless situation change his belief system that he created for himself. He said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. As Christians, most of us believe that our God is able to do all things and that with him nothing shall be impossible. However, Church of God, the main challenge that Christendom is faced with is the issue of our personal belief system. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1, Hebrews 6 verse 1 says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go unto 
go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. No, sir, no, ma. We don't have problems with the doctrine of Christ per se. We don't have problems about repentance. We don't have problems about our faith towards God. It is our belief system that the devil and his cohorts are contending with. And they are using it to rob us of our blessings. They are using it to rob us of our breakthroughs. Mark chapter 9 from verse 23 through to 24. Mark chapter 9 verse 23 to 24. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Listen to me, church of God. Believing in God is not the finality of your Christian faith. Because even the devil believes that there is God. You can believe till kingdom come. It's the application of what you believe that God can do that brings about the results that you are expecting. The father in the Bible passage we just read, realizing the importance of his personal belief, cried and said, I believe, but help thou mine unbelief. Create your belief system. You have to create it. You have to make it. This man cried out. This also should be the cry of us as a church. Because we are constantly, regimentally, frequently missing out of God's blessings because we lack a belief system. We lack it. Come to think about it, church of God. Imagine the vastness of the system of God. Imagine the vastness of the organization called the kingdom of God. Imagine the birds. Imagine the cotton, those tiny, tiny ants that God is still mindful of. Think about the numerous angels that God has to attend to. Think about the numerous human beings scattered upon the face of earth. The last time I checked, we have more than 7.8 billion human beings. I don't think they got to up where to add those that are there. Imagine the organization called God's organization. The reason God is not going cuckoo, the reason God is not confused, that before he created anything, he put a working system in place. It is left to you to also create your own organizational system that you will tap into the power of God. Encore had their wires outside this building. It will serve you no good. I mean, you don't take your cell phone and climb the ladder to the pole and say you want to charge your phone. No, we created some outlet that taps into the grade of electricity. It is not God's fault. It's your failure to create a linkable system. It's your fault not creating a belief system that taps
collapse out of the power of God. This man realizing that he believes Jesus can do it, but he lacks the belief system to grab it. He looked at his folly and his helplessness and he cried with tears. Help me. I am missing it. I wish the church can wake up and stop blaming God. God, why me? God, why? God, why? And God be saying, eh, John, why? Let's why be why and why and see who will lose out. Not God, but it's John. Create your belief system because the God we serve is unlimited in power. He's unlimited in resources. He's unlimited in glory. He's unlimited in signs and wonders. They day I mean, they day plenty, plenty. But how come you are still without power? How come you are still groping in darkness? The reason? Your failure of creating your belief system. You have to make it. You have to create it. Shout hallelujah, somebody. Tell your neighbor and say, create your belief system. It is the created belief system that connects to the unlimited reservoir of God's blessings. He's a God of signs and wonders. And he has not stopped performing signs and wonders. Remember the story of Jesus Christ. The Bible says Jesus Christ was heading towards another assignment to perform signs and wonders. And a woman, a woman, a woman, a woman, look at your neighbor and say, a woman, a woman, said in her heart, said something in her heart. And Jesus Christ said, you have been diseased, you have been menstruating for 12 years non-stop. You have spent everything. But he said, you know what? The blood has stopped. It was not my power that actually did it. It was your faith linked up to my power that did it. He said, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has tapped the power. There were a lot of people clogging Jesus. But when somebody connected her connecting system into the system of power. Jesus Christ said, oh, 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 oh. who touched me? Virtue for blood issue just left my body. Who touched me? Who took that kind of power out of me? I have to go and refill. Who? Because if Jesus Christ was, who touched me? The, woman, the Bible said the woman was afraid because something left Jesus. Something was pulled out of Jesus. And just, who, who, who touched me? The Bible said the woman trembling. Say, ah, it's me. Say, wow. Wow. Your connecting system pulled something out of me. You have issue. A virtue for your issue just left my body. Be of good cheer. Oh yeah, the Bible says the blood stopped instantaneously. How many people were there? Plenty. They were just bumping on Jesus. Hey Jesus, you are the Even the disciples say, ah, oh God, let's go and rest. Though. Fatigue of setting. See, everybody is touching you. Say, hmm. There is a touch. Somebody connected to my power. If only you can have a system. It's not every plug enters this. You have to get the right one. If you are coming from Nigeria with your, with your socket and with your plugs, you come here, you can never have that power. So you have to create. You know the issue you are faced with. This woman said, my own issue. I don't need to touch Jesus. My connecting point is his garment. You can't stand and touch the hem of any garment. So she went on her. (laughs) 
your connecting power could be going on your knees. Your prayerlessness has to change. Uh, I say, ah, I'm coming there. This thing, I'm coming. She said in her heart, that was her system. Her created connecting system. Do you want to know your belief system? You want to know? Let me tell you. Your belief system is what you constantly, constantly tell yourself. In your heart. That's, that's your belief system. In I am weak. Heart. I am weak. I am sick. I am fat. I am short. I am... Huh? You remember all the I am now? I am, I am, I am. Listen, some people even add Jara, I am going into depression. You will get there. God said, whatever I hear you say, I will help you to perform it. You are going into depression? The devil will meet you there. Because I don't dwell inside depression. That's why in Joel 3 verse 10, he said, let the weak. This thing has distracted me now. I'm coming back. I'm coming back to this thing you just saw. Let the weak say. Is that telling lies? No, sir. God, your God, call it those things that be not as though they were. You're weak. But use your mouth to say, I am what? Strong. A songwriter said, I am what? Poor. But I will, I will say I'm rich. Listen, you think you are sincere. You think you are realistic. Being realistic at times is being negative. I just want to tell them my heart. You have been telling us your heart and you still remain on the same spot. Don't tell us your heart. Tell us the word of God. She said in her heart, what you are saying in your heart is your belief system. Shout hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor. Give him hard high five and say, create your belief system. Listen, bro. Sis, life is about words. Words. Life is about wor words. War of words. Words. And that's why the Bible says life and death is in the power of the mouth. He that loveth it shall do what? She shall eat the fruit thereof. God will do for you. All he will do for you is based on what you say. The woman with the issue of blood said in her heart, if I can but not touch Jesus, but the hem of his garment, I know that I shall be healed. And that was what happened. No wonder Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. When you read a scripture like that, it means Paul was weak. But he was saying, no, not my weakness. Uh -huh, not my weakness. The body is, is weak, but my spirit is strong. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me. Christ in you is the hope of glory. And that's why the psalmist says something. He said, I shall not what? Die. So who asked, who, what, what was going on? Something from the medical science, something from the doctor's office was telling him that he was going to die. Something from the doctor's report was telling him that he was going to die. But he said, Mba, as an Igbo man, Ochio, as a Yoruba man, as an Aousa man, 
I I as an edoman. You know, I do get plenty language. I'm trying to see. <laughs> I'm trying to see which one I will throw in. <laughs> I should say it. <laughs> Leave me. <laughs> I shall not die. You will die. I shall. Life is about words. War of words. You shall die. I shall not die. The doctor says you will die. I shall not die. Whose report will you believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. His word says I am healed. I am healed. His word says I am rich. I am rich. He said that he may sanctify the church. He suffered without the gift. That he may bless the church. He suffered without the gift. I know the grace of my Lord Jesus Christ. That even though he was rich, he became poor. So that John Igbe William Mawa, through his poverty, can be rich. Words. The doctors have told you the truth, but what is the word of God saying? I shall not die, but live. I'm not done yet. I'm not. How many of you are done? Even at age ninety, you are not done. You are not allowed to die until you are old and aged. Make us hear my shantari araba. Create your belief system, bro. Create your belief system, sis. Every organization, every organization, they have a system that suits their organizational module. It fits it. They have it. Heaven's glorious mighty. We have one key one into his presence through worship. That's why every time we praise and worship God, he shows up. God, that is our link. That's our connecting point. That is how we enter into his presence. You also, you ought to have an organizational setup. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. However, however, as a Christian, your belief system should be hinged on the word of God, not on superstitious belief. When I was growing up, there's this, I didn't know how we knew it or how we started it. I, I, I used to play soccer. No, this is soccer. No, football. Tom Tom. Felele. We used to play it. Put two stones in a dusty road, middle of the road. We playing. And I loved it. Shegwa Degba, me and I, we play soccer. We were born on the same street, Yanduka Street, just Plato State, Nigeria, West Africa. <laughs> we used to play. At times, that soccer would enter my head. It would be it will be getting dark. I will still be playing until we can't see the ball again. This day. And what they told us then is that when you don't do a hala for house, when you are entering that house, carry stones. So as you just throw it behind you. Don't look back. Just enter. <laughs> Superstitious belief. I was so late. I knew I was late. And my mother then traveled to our village. It was papa at home. So, as I got to the door, I don't pack stone. Just, I just entered. Baba was pounding yam. Because I have done the ritual. So he was pounding. He was taking the yam into the mortar. So I just showed up. So the spoon, the, the, you know, not this our American spoon. The spoon they make with... Uh, there is this thing they melt. Lead. <laughs> that big spoon. He just used the back of it. Ooh, bam. <laughs> you know, 
Brashola was displaying some light. There is kind of slap. <laughs> I don't know where those light. You don't be seeing blue, yellow, red. <laughs> and some flashes of stars. We just... That was the last time I did that thing. It didn't work. <laughs> Build your belief system based on the word of God and not superstitious belief. Shout hallelujah. During the stormy weather of Job, he said, I know. How? Through his belief system. Not through what he was going through. He said, I know. Then my redeemer liveth. Don't allow circumstances, sir, ma, to change your belief system. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't allow your, your environment, environmental changes to change your belief system. You used to be on fire until you showed up in America. Everything was by prayer. But until you came to America, you find that I don't need to pray about Nepal. I don't need to pray about throwing tire. I don't need to. I don't need to. There's hospital. Even if I don't have money, they will, at least they will heal me. They will service me first. All of a sudden, your prayer points started reducing. Today, you barely pray. Because there's no arm robber. They, 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 they did, but not as where you are coming from. So you don't pray anymore. Your belief system is diminishing. And the devil is capitalizing on it to terrorize you. If there is a place you should pray. Now here. Yes. Because the, the elders will say. That, hey. you were bajela. that means if you are so comfortable. You begin to misbehave. Comfort. Before. Heat will not allow you to sleep. You will wake up in the night. Oh, and the next thing is like, yeah, especially when you just hear big, 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 big for door. Hey, what day? But now everything is just cool. In fact, when you hear a door knock, it's like, huh, oh, that's disturbing. Create your belief system and don't allow anything. If you don't create your belief system, you will be spoiled. That's why Paul was warning the Colossians. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Colossians 2 verse 8. It says, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Unfortunately, a lot of Christians are spoiled. You have allowed the philosophy and the rudiments of this life to spoil you. Now, your marriage is being directed by social media. Your life has been altered by movies. Sir, movie is a fake life for... It's fake. Don't allow any man to spoil you. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now because of time. Let me go to 1 Samuel 17. And with this, I think I'll close because of time. 1 Samuel 17, 38 and 39. And Saul armed David with his armor. And he put an element of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail. And David guarded his sword upon his armor. And he has said to go. For he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off. Listen to me, church. It is a known fact that when people are going to war, they will wear armor or protection. 
But David rejected the offer to put on the armor of Saul because it was no part of David's belief system. He said, I've not tried this. I've not tried this. I've not tried this. I've not tried this. I've not proved it. King da- I mean, King Saul was giving David what did not work for him. If it was armor to fight Goliath, or God, Saul, what are you doing in hiding? Some of us, people are introducing us to what they had done and failed. So they want you to fail. And you jump at it. Do your own feasibility study. Don't allow anyone spoil you by vain philosophy. Have your own belief system. Others may, but I cannot. Shout hallelujah, somebody. You should be weary of anyone that tries to introduce you to what is not working. That's why Paul was telling the Galatians in Galatians 1 verse 6 through to 8. Galatians 1 from verse 6. He says, I marvel that ye are soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there, are, there be some that trouble you. I pray every troubler will be troubled. And they will prevent the gospel of Christ. But thou, but though we, or an angel from heaven, preach another gospel, and any other gospel unto you, then, then that which we have preached unto you, let that person or that angel be what? Accursed. I pray that curse will be upon anyone that wants to move you away from God in the name of Jesus. Listen, after David rejected the offer of King Saul, this is what he did in 1 Samuel 17, 40. 1 Samuel 17, 40. And David took his staff in his hand and chose five, him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag which he had, even in the street. And his sling was in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine. I believe we all know the end of the story. David killed Goliath by his tested armor. Shout hallelujah somebody. I say shout hallelujah somebody. So the question is, brothers and sisters, when you are faced with the Goliath of this life, when you are faced with the adversities of this life, when you are faced with the storm of life, do you have a system whereby you can link up with God? David drew nigh to the problem because he had a workable system. Listen, let me just gist you. Your belief system, your belief system could be declaring a fast and a prayer. Your belief system could be entering into his presence with praise and worship. You just say, for the next seven days, I just want to enter into his presence through what? Praise and worship. Listen, your belief system could be a special offering. Your belief system, whereby you can link up with God, could be feeding the poor, helping the needy. It could be looking around and linking up. There are some of you, you looked around this church and said, the church needs so and so. The church needs this. And you, you bought it and you came to pastor. This is what I saw that the church needs. But I am linking it up with my need. And we have prayed. And testimony had abounded. So, you're, you're, I mean, something like this is a link. Let me say it. In some churches, this one is for the pastor. Stop looking at me like this now. <laughs> this is not an offering. It's not an offering. It's a link. A lot of you, you have linked up your offering with something that you need. 
Listen. God loves you with a passion, but you are not the only one he loves. God has prepared for the need of the 7.8 billion human beings that, that, that are living on earth, but you are not, you are just one of them. What do you have to attract God? Listen, for a guy Abraham, Father Abraham, you know what his belief system was? Altar. Altar. Everywhere he showed up, he builds an altar. Every victory, every success, he builds an altar. And God said, ah, so this is where I can meet with you. Okay, I want to give you a blessing that through you, you will bless the whole world. Go and erect an altar for me. And that altar, put your son on top of it. God knew that was the link to the destiny of Abraham. And Abraham did it. You know the whole story. And God said, you did this. I swear by myself that in blessing, I will bless you. What have you prepared for God to link your destiny with? Even your regular offering, you don't give. How can you be needing a $5 million breakthrough? And your offering is five dollars. I am not considered. I've said this time with that, with that number. I found out. Mommy passed and I. Thank God for a good wife that understands her husband. We found out from experience that everything we attach to a special seed, it's a matter of time we get it. That's why any pastor that comes in here and say. A thousand dollars. Before, before you know it, mommy, she's out and I'm out. Because that is our belief system. It worked for us when we were in Nigeria. I gave the highest offering in Nigeria. It was a seed. Matthew Ashimolo came and when uh, Redeem was 52, he said, We want you to give God 52,000 naira. In every currency or any currency, 52,000, no be small money. In those good days, we did it. I'm still reaping it today. Every opportunity, Mommy Pastor, and I have, we sow because it is our connecting system. Yours may not be that kind of money, it may be just service to the house of God. What is your belief system? What do you use to link up with God? It could be a service. It could be Bible study. It could be Sunday school. You have to create it. And that's why David found that. He created his own. You know the story of 2 Samuel 24, 24 and 25. Something was happening in the land. There was a plague that was killing people. And David said, hmm, prayer won't solve this thing. It's the altar that will solve this thing. So he went to Arana, the man who says the materials to build an altar. And he saw King David went by himself. Did you hear that? David went, the king went by himself. There are certain errands that you have to go for yourself. There are certain things you buy for your wife that you don't send a friend. You go by yourself because you know her taste. You know how to connect to her. There are some wives let the flower be as big as pastor. They will ask you who died. <laughs> you know how to get your husband's heart. By now you've been living with this man for 20, 30 years. You still don't know how to get to his heart. So the king showed up and the, and the seller of this material said, eh, Oga King, what do you want? He said, I come to buy 
materials to serve my God. And the man said, ah, Oga King, just take what you like. Just take and go. Ah, King. And David said, if I do that, the blessing will go to you. I will not give unto God the thing that does not cost me. It has to pinch me. You can't have $10,000 in your account and you are giving God $5. It will not pinch you. <laughs> I say what? It will not pinch you. The percentage is too tiny. But when God said, give me your son, that one will pinch you. That's why Abraham did not tell his wife, oh, because Wahala for bust. Say, no, repeat it again. I think old age don't come, right? I repeat it. Which Isaac? My Isaac. Ah, you know women. We just carry it up. Huh? We go die here today. So Abraham did not tell her. It was when they came back. Create your belief system. What is your belief system? Have you wondered why the redeemed Christian church of God is prospering all over the world? Because Papa Deboye found a system that works for him and those in his ministry. And what's that system? What's that system? Huh? 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 Say it. <sighs> no, not church planting. Huh? Not Holy Ghost service. Huh? Soul winning. All that one are the product of what he had plugged into. Fasting. At his age, he still fasts without food. He said he can't remember how many times he had fasted 40 days without food. Why is he doing that? That is connecting factor. And that's why he extended it to us. We fasted, we have fasted 100 days before. In this church, we did it. <laughs> I was talking to one man, a minister in Nigeria. I went to his house to measure him. He said, I should eat. I said, we are fasting for 100 days. He said, yeah, what, what do we now do? <laughs> and that was his question. Find out your connecting factor. It could be prayers, it could be praise, it could be service, it could be giving, it could be prayers, it could be fasting. When you find that that is what God uses to settle you, don't reinvent the wheel. Improve it, develop it, and keep on going. Remember, what you say with your mouth, you will become. It's a matter of time. Give the Lord a big clap. Shall we rise? Please look up. Ah. Look up. There's a brother is in our midst. His mother's belief system is to drag her children to church. And the church do this. You do morning service. You go for evangelism. You come back for evening service. Sunday school, Bible study. 
This man was so tired. This boy was so tired. He would just say, God, help me. Help me to leave this house and go to college. So the day he went to college, he was rejoicing that I have escaped. But not knowing that something had been sown in his life. Parents, please continue. The person I'm talking about is, is one of our serious workers and members in this church. Very serious. Very serious. But he did not happen. He thought he escaped, not knowing that something had been sown. Let your belief system be that you will pray for your children day in, day out. It doesn't matter how rascally they look now. It doesn't matter how they dress. You, did you hear that? <laughs> Don't tell them I told you. Just link them up with God. Find a system that works for you. My late mother, I didn't know where she got that system from. She sells food by, the, by, the, by somewhere called PWD in Joss. Her food. Hmm. But she now found out that the first person that buys from her, if she collects the money, she never sells well. So I didn't know what, how it happened. She stopped collecting money from them. The first person that buys food from her, she will say, Ijani, Kanye, that means I should go and collect the money. I will collect the money from the person and hand over to her. That was her belief system. She says, I mean, it's like a bee half of activity. Everybody is mama, mama. She, she, is not, she was not the only one, but she just discovered that when I touched the money first and I gave the money to her, she says like something else. Listen, in the, the, well, I don't know if that is scriptural, but everybody has a connecting link. No employment, you don't get employed without a recruiter. That is a link. So why will you be linkless to your God? Why, why must you just be serving God? And you don't have a connecting link. I, I, I told you I pray in the night. There is a link to God. You must create it. It's not there. You have to create it. Where you link up with God. If God is your link, if he's your source, you will never go begging. Shout hallelujah somebody. First Corinthians, I'm, I'm looking at the time. First Corinthians 7.32, First Corinthians 7.32, we are all standing. It says, but I will have you without carefulness that he that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. Your overall belief system should be how to please the Lord. Not how to please your wife. Not how to please your husband. But how to please the Lord. And that's why when people step on your toes, that is not how to please the Lord. It's how to get you irritable. You always think about how to please the Lord. When you're coming to church, how do I please God? When, when, you want to, when you want to do anything, you say, can this be pleasing to God? That's why God said, you are bringing this to me, go and give it to your governors. Malachi chapter 2. Go and give it to your governors if they will accept it. So God is not a beggar. Link up with him and give him your very best. And you will see what we are going to see as we march on through the second quarter of this year. If you're in this church listening to me and you know you're not born again, you have not linked up with God. The greatest link 
is Jesus Christ. He says in John 1 verse 12, he said, as many as received him, John 1 verse 12, as many as received him, to them gave he power. That power, you tap it from accepting Jesus. You become the son of God. Even them that believe in his name. So if you are in the church and you have not been born again, you have no link. You have no link. But Jesus Christ is that link between, say we have that man Jesus who is a, the one who reconciles us. He's a man between us and God who is reconciling us back to God. So I want us to lift up our hands and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart if you are not born again. And Lord Jesus, if you are born again, Father, please grant me the link. Grant me the link. Show me the link so that I can create that link. And if you have a link, present it to God. It could be praise. It could be worship. It could be giving. It could be like blessing the Lord with what is on the altar like this. It could be prayer. It could be fasting. It could be doing good. Whatsoever it is that the Lord, you know the Lord has used it to link you up with your destiny, present it now to the Lord and say, Father, this is my link. This has been my link. This is my link. This has been my link. Help me to develop it. Help me to improve it. Begin to pray now. Begin to pray. 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 As many as received him, to them give you power. Thank you, Jesus. Makasi kanaboka shanta da 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 brava. Makasi kamashanto kosi ara makashanta da 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 brava. Remoko pi akasi kanamashanta kasi kaboko shanta da 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 brava. Makasi kanaboshanta da 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 brava. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray we're going to pray we're going to collect offering we're going to collect our tithes that will happen as part of the service but I want you to link that challenge with something it could be your offering today it could be your tithes today it could be a seed today. It could be anything that you want to bring on the altar. Link it up. Please look up. Look up. Please. What, what do you think this woman would have gone to? How do you think she might have felt? The Bible says she spent all her living to doctors, to physicians, to specialists, to gynecologists. Anywhere a doctor is, she spends her money, all her living, just because she wants to be well. And the Bible says she got worst. But she now said in her heart, my only last card is to touch the hem of his garment. Prolonged blood stinks, it smells. I believe she has taken care of herself as she just left herself. Then she made up her mind to do the spectacular. So I don't know what you're going through. Like I told us the other day, what you go through, I go through one way or the other. Link it up with the presence of God, whatsoever it is. Whatsoever it is. It may be an issue of money, an issue. It could be a bloody issue, whatsoever it is. I really want you to stretch forth your hands to the altar. If you are linking up with your offering, as soon as it's time for the offering, you will continue that prayer, please. Very important. Because you are linking up with the source of power. Begin to pray now. Stretch your hands towards the altar and say, Father, this is it. This is what the doctors have said. This is what my body is saying. 
This is what my husband or my wife is saying. This is what the economists are saying. This is what is going on. Father God, I link it up with the anointing in the house. I want to touch the hem of your garment by faith. I want to build an altar like Abraham did. I want to build an altar with something that cost me something like David did. Thank you, Lord. Commit it to the hands of God. That illness, that ache, that pain, that disappointment, that hopeless situation like that of Job, he used his created belief system and said, I know. This is not my God. I know he lives. Even when I die, I will see him. And of course, you know the end of the story. David said, I know that my God will do it. He has done it before. What the Lord has done before, he can do it again. He did it for David. He's going to do it again for you. He touched me. He touched me. And I know the joy that fills my soul. Something has happened, and now I know he touched me. look up. I was born in Jos and I grew up in Jos until I left. The typical house some man will tell you if you introduce anything to him, the first question he will ask, have you tried it before? If you say you've tried it and it works, that's it. We jump at it. What I'm telling you, church, has been working for me. Because that was the only thing I had. No father, no mother, nobody. I was left on my own. I was left with my mouth and my vocalization. I used this my mouth to better my life. Because God said, whatever I hear you say, that's what I'm going to do. That's what Papa Debuye is also using. He called a jungle city, city, city. Redemption City, read. Today, what he said came to pass. Mama Pastor, um, no, Mommy Pastor, high ceiling, high ceiling, high ceiling. Let us, uh, high ceiling, high ceiling, high ceiling, high ceiling, high ceiling. 
That's what she was talking about. We have high ceiling. Listen, God has put the mechanism in place. You just tap in. God, say it. The doctor says you are going to die. You say, hey, no problem. But I, I will not die. So there is a life that you receive when you speak life. It is hard, it is hard, it is hard. Hardship becomes your portion. That's why I preach the sermon. I go preach them again. Your mouth will take you places. That was all I was left with. This mouth. Ah, I use them. And I'm still using it. Everything you see in this church, this is my mouth in the place of prayer. Anything I don't like, I talk with my mouth. Eh, why are you speaking broken inside church now? I'll use my mouth to say it. By the way, the chair you're sitting on, how comfortable is it? Whatever you want, think about it and begin to say it. That's all you need to do. And Jesus will bring it to pass. So we are not going to die but live. To declare the glory of the Lord in the land of what? In the living. We go celebrate you and your husband because you are going to get married. You will bring your children. We will dedicate them. We have four children we are going to dedicate today. Your own is coming. Give seven people a hard high five and say your celebration is coming. Your celebration is coming. Your testimony is coming. Because God will bring it to pass. Shout hallelujah!